Hi, my name is Natalia Ouellette and I'm a real estate attorney here in the state of Florida. And today I wanted to talk to you about five things that you should absolutely know about deposits and real estate contracts. So number one, a deposit is required to have a valid contract. You have to have some skin in the game. And so that's why it's required in order to seal the deal. It's uh, called consideration in real estate contract law. And again, it just means you are putting something at risk in order for the other person to say, all right, I won't consider anyone else's offer. Number two, financing impacts who gets to deposit. So let's say you are putting your property up for sale and you have a buyer and that buyer has to have a loan in order to purchase. You permitted it. You said, okay, all right, you can get independent third party financing. Well, if the lender says, I'm sorry, but this property is just not appraising at the price that you guys have negotiated, well, the buyer can get out of the deal and get his deposit back as a result of that failure to appraise. On the other hand, if your buyer has full loan approval, everything's going well in terms of their lender, the lender is ready, willing, and able to go, and the buyer simply does not want to close, then you are entitled to get back your security deposit. <clears throat> Number three inspection periods matter so generally if you leave this item in the contract blank and this is the standard florida bar real estate association um, contract blank there's 15 days to inspect the property and in that 15 day period the buyer can go take a look and say i'm sorry i don't like it i'm not interested i'm out and if they give you written notice during that 15 day period they can get their money back and that's it that terminates the contract However, written is key. It is a requirement. And if they fail to do this, then you have a strong argument for saying, I'm sorry, that deposit is mine. You waived any of uh, time to object during this inspection period. Number four, um, if you are going to have a security deposit, then I don't recommend that you give it to either the realtor for the buyer or to the realtor for the seller. And the reason why is because they represent the respective parties. They have skin in the game and they're also entitled to keep a little bit of it in case of a dispute. So if you're gonna have a deposit, give it to the third party escrow agent. That means give it to the title company who's again, a third party escrow agent, or give it to the independent real estate attorney who is engaging the transaction. Make sure this is not the attorney for the seller or the attorney for the buyer, but an independent third party. And number five, not least important, it's just number five on my list. So in the event that there is a dispute um, and you know one party is asking for the deposit, the other party is asking for the deposit, you have 10 days in which you can negotiate who gets what, whether you're splitting it, who's, you know, are you giving up the whole thing, giving it back to the other party? You have 10 days. After the 10 day period, you have to mediate under that contract unless you change the clause, struck it out, put something else in there in writing. So the standard Florida bar contract says 10 days after which you have to mediate uh, and those mediation costs are split 50-50 between the parties as well as the attorney's fees to mediate. It's only if it gets to the point of litigation that the prevailing party, that means the winner, gets um, to be entitled to attorney's fees and costs. So those are things to keep in mind, five things to understand about earnest money deposits. Good luck out there, investors.